Here's a question. Who's the greatest fighter of all time? The latest theory is that it's that man who didn't fight in Vietnam since blacks have been done no evil by those he calls yellow people. That same man who, far from humble, fought that rumble in that jungle, who said he danced like a butterfly, whose health has now been scuppered by the harsh onset of that disease that makes him shake like trees in the breeze. Some claim Ali is the finest. Some say his appeal is timeless, but if you ask my opinion, then the finest is in England. Who's that, you might say? Wait, listen. This fighter treats opposition with indifference, with disdain. But who's this fighter? What's his name? You'll ask again. And I'll say, calm down. This fighter's no man. It's a town. A town, you'll say, somewhat intrigued. Please, how is a town in the league of the great Muhammad Ali? That man who defied his army. Who, filled with pride, blessed with special skills, told black folk not to settle for the third best or the second? What is this town? What do you reckon? Take a guess. If your assumption is that I refer to London, then you're right. This town's a fighter. It's faced foes cunning as vipers. It's faced sly and swift embrasion. Embraced hasty immigration. And it has retained its status as the greatest. You see, this city's fought them all. It's fought the sniffy, snobbish and obsessive souls, each one of whom nightly patrols the king's robe in his Merkel rolls, the fruits of his financial goals. It's fought the rude boys in that bust in Brixton, fought their every cuss. It's fought punks and goss in Camden. Skin has chanted the national anthem. And the reason that it's fought them is that London will support them all. It will support the Muslim and those who would wish to push him down. It will support the Christian, the Jew, it will support all of you. But London will defend its sense of self at anyone's expense. The veteran of a thousand summers, this town has ground down all newcomers. See the victories it scored, see all the hits that it's absorbed. It's seen off the Blitz, the Romans, Irish terrorist explosions. And more recently, it's seen off bombers who blew their heads clean off. Sure, they rattled it, a little. But to fill it like a skittle takes little more than violence. To intimidate this island's capital takes something greater than those who might smite skyscrapers. It takes more than that thick unhealthy smog and slow flow over Chelsea. It takes more than that endless cycle of commuters, snarling, spiteful, stuck on M25 to tear apart London's insides. You see, it's a complex city, London, with more layers than an onion. Layers made of blacks, Jews, Turks, white bankers high off cities perks who they coke and swap high fives. Top football players and their wives. Stars of the big screen with their chic apartments. Here and there, a Greek, a Russian, strolling through its parks, who with his fellow oligarchs has date raped his state, then escaped. But this city still can't be shaped by those who see it gentrified. Would love it if it gently died. It's a fearsome adversary that for years has had to carry all this weight. And though millions have fought it, its resilience somehow remains. And if that strength stems from the calm and cold blood of the River Thames, I just don't know. I just know this, that London will one day dismiss us as it has dismissed all those who've tried to dress it in their clothes. And that's why, if you stage the fight between Muhammad Ali, top of his game, in his prime, and London, this hometown of mine. I'd bet a few dimes he could blast it, outclass it, but not outlast it. <laughs>